Welcome. I'm Mally Shansfeld, Managing Editor of Implant Practice US, a Medmark publication. Welcome to a live presentation and question and answer with Dr. Rick Ferguson. In our webinar today, we will be exploring a completely digital workflow for in-office fabrication of surgical guides, appliances, and models. Before we get started, I'd like to invite viewers to use your question box in your control panel to ask any questions, and your questions will be answered at the end of the webinar. I'm pleased to introduce our guest for today, Dr. Rick Ferguson. Dr. Ferguson has been involved in teaching implant dentistry for the last 20 years and has lectured nationally and internationally. These lecture topics have included treatment planning, case selection, simple and complex surgical placement and restoration, advanced bone grafting and bone graft materials, use of 3D imaging and surgical guides, hygienic maintenance and management of complications and failures. Dr. Ferguson has placed and restored over 5,000 dental implants and maintains a private practice with his wife, Dr. Catherine Ferguson, in Davie, Florida, emphasizing dental implants and they also teach a live surgery course. I'm pleased to welcome Dr. Ferguson and look forward to his webinar today. Thank you, Molly. Um, so uh, my goal today is to explore how we're using 3D imaging, uh, CVCT, and optical scanning in our practice on a daily basis. As Molly said, um, Dr. Catherine Ferguson and I run a, a company called Implant Educators. We actually have a uh, live surgery course. It's a seven month continuum, which we run with the University of Florida. And actually we've recently expanded that over to LSU. And we had our kickoff uh, session last weekend. So we now have two locations where doctors can come and get trained in implantology, uh, all aspects and in, including uh, the ability to place implants and do bone grafting procedures under our supervision. We have a full team of speakers and the same uh, lineup of speakers and, and uh, schedule at both, lo both locations. Uh, that's Florida and LSU. But the thing that I'm probably most proud of is our private practice. Uh, Kathy and I have a small private practice in Davie, Florida, which is a suburb of Fort Lauderdale. And we practice the full scope of implant dentistry uh, in this in this uh, somewhat small office. So uh, I seem to have lost my uh, here. Let's see. Okay, let's put that back on. All right, keeps not coming out. Okay, uh, in our in our office we have the uh, CareStream 8100 CBCT and the CareStream 3600 optical scanner. And I'd like to go through now and show how we use all of this technology on a daily basis. So the impetus for actually getting involved with all of this 3D technology came about uh, just a few years ago. Before uh, 2013, 2014, we were not using uh, any digital processes other than having CVCT. Uh, we weren't doing a lot of guided surgery. Um, I attended a meeting at the Florida National Dental Congress in June of 2013, and at that meeting I saw a dentist place a, a, an implant using a surgical guide. Uh, he placed it very quickly in, in about 10 or 15 minutes uh, as a live surgery course, and it was very impressive because he had milled that uh, surgical guide uh, chair side. So I walked over to the booth, of course the, the, the course was being sponsored by a company, and I walked over to the booth and asked, uh, you know, wow, this is really uh, very interesting stuff. I'd like to get involved doing this. And I told him to write me up. So the bottom line was, I, at the time, uh, it would have cost $330,000 to buy all the equipment to uh, do what, that, what I saw that, that doctor do at that program. Of course, that was a, uh, you know, quite a bit, quite an expensive proposition because also the system could only fabricate single two surgical guides and it seemed like quite a bit to spend at the time on, uh, on technology that was somewhat limiting. It was also a closed system. So uh, it sort of put me on a journey and I went uh, on this journey to figure out how to uh, do this uh, not just at a lower cost, but at a, with an improved workflow. 
And today we're talking about uh, technology. Some of the things that uh, we use technology for, of course, is a better diagnosis. We use it to impress patients so we can get better case acceptance. There are digital workflow advantages. One of the big things in a, in a small office like we have is getting rid of stone models and going direct digital. It allows us to have better communication, both with the patient and with everybody in the practice, as well as the laboratory. And it also allows workflows that are not available in an analog world. Uh, so let's look at some of these things and what we should be looking for when we buy technology. Today, I think it's important that we look for an open system, interoperability between different vendors. Uh, that's sort of the journey that I went on to, in, since 2013 to try to find different technologies, finding the best of each technologies and bringing them together uh, through interoperability or being able to export certain files and working even in uh, software that, is act that are actually free. We want versatile and easy digital workflows. And what that means for us in dentistry is the fewest number of clicks. The fewest number of clicks to get from point A to point Z, that's what we should be looking for today. We want to be able to import and export files from different uh, vendors and such. We want uh, software licenses that allow us to, you know, even if we stop paying the, the, the license fee or if we decided to leave that vendor to go and, and still be able to access our data. We want, of course, efficient service and training so we don't have any downtime in, in our practice. And all of this uh, basically led us to uh, the CareStream systems that I mentioned before. So the bottom line is we have a patient. The patient is, of course, a real patient. We, we want to be able to scan the patient with the CBCT, with the, uh, the uh, optical scanning and create a vir virtual patient. We do our digital workflows, we do our computer-aided design, and then we do our comp computer-aided manufacturing, either milling or 3D printing, and then we deliver a restoration to our patient. Uh, in our practice, we're not doing any milling, so we're pretty much going to focus on 3D printing today. We let the, the lab do the milling part of it at this point in time. Uh, at some point in the future, we've, we might be doing milling, but right now we just don't feel it fits our type of practice that we have. So uh, the first thing I'm going to talk about is the CS36 intraoral scanner. Uh, this is the second version of uh, an optical scanner from CureStream. And uh, we have both systems in the office, the older one and the, new, and the newer one. The newer one is certainly a, a huge upgrade. It allows us to do things much faster. We're scanning a full arch full upper and lower with a bite registration for our ortho cases, for example, anywhere between five and 10 minutes. It's really incredible the speed of this technology. Here's a scan that, that shows you how the workflow, how it goes for doing a single tooth crown on a natural tooth. Uh, we're scanning the upper arch, the lower arch, scanning in the bite. Uh, there's a selection process that you have to do for a refinement. Uh, so that uh, the software will do extra refinement on the part where you are going to uh, have a prep tooth, as you'll see in a second here. So here we're going to select this area so that uh, the software can do an extra refinement. This video is speeded up, of course, but it just takes a few minutes to do in, in the operatory. We're able to look at the margins. And actually, our assistants are doing 90% of the scanning in our practice. So it's really freed up the doctors in our practice to do, uh, Dr. Kathy and I, to do other things. We, we actually leave the room and the assistants uh, do the scanning. So you can see the, um, the, the margins. We have the ability to bring in the bite and check the bite. Once everything's checked, we hit OK and save the uh, images. And once the patient is dismissed from the operatory, the assistant will actually send the case to the laboratory um, right from the operatory. So she can write up the prescription for whatever case it is and it goes right to, right to the laboratory directly. And one of the nice things about the CareStream system is that there's no charge for that service. There's no charge to use their lab portal. The lab will actually get the images in color. Um, you can see I turned off the color here for a second. The, the margins show up a little bit sharper when you do that. So uh, here's, uh, here's what happens with, um, with an, uh, 
an optical scan. You can look at it in all different directions. And one of the things that was somewhat surprising to me, at least when we started using this technology for crown and bridge dentistry was that we found that the occlusion was actually more accurate than doing an analog technique. And I realized very quickly that the reason that is, is because when you take an optical bite registration, as you can see here, the upper model and the lower model actually intersect. And that's something that happens because when you take the, the bite scan, the, uh, the PDL spaces are compressed um, when the patient bites down. So that gives us a better bite. It's a more accurate bite so that when, our, when we go to deliver our crowns, uh, there's really not much to do as far as um, adjustment of the occlusion. So that's, um, that's one case for a single tooth. Here's a situation where we did six anterior teeth. Uh, and one of the nice things about having this technology that if you miss a margin in one of the teeth, you don't have to take a whole new impression over again. You can just cut out one section and scan, rescan just that part of the margin. So sometimes we'll actually on multiple teeth like this, just scan one tooth at a time and build as we go across and pack pack the cord down as we go across, and that helps with tissue management uh, greatly. And here's the final result from that case. Now, this patient happened to be a Bruxer, uh, so we made these, these uh, Bru uh, uh, zirconia crowns, which are um, very, very hard, very, very strong for this particular patient. And you can see the, the marginal fit, and even the aesthetics are, are actually pretty good on this type of restoration although not as good as if we had done Emacs or something else. But for this particular patient, this was, this was a requirement because of their grinding. Here's a case where we do a, a, um, a restoration on an implant. Um, this implant was actually played, placed with a surgical guide that we made in office through 3D printing. And now we're, everything's healed. We're going back and doing the final impression. And it's such an easy workflow in the CareStream system. This is a scan abutment. We take out the healing collar, place a scan abutment, and then there, uh, we scan the we actually scan the uh, the arch or the quadrant prior to taking out the healing collar, and then we cut that section out and just scan the scan abutment. Again, this, the video speeded up here a little bit for time's sake, but uh, basically you're, you're doing one scan and cutting out one small area, and then rescanning with the scan abutment and doing a refining process. And then what you see is the laboratory will actually get both of these images. So they can have the soft tissue profile with the healing collar, as well as with the scan abutment, in case there's a mismatch in the parts, um, or if there's a temper in place, you can actually scan it with the temper in place and then scan with the scan abutment and still get the soft tissue profile, at least at the crest of the tissue. So that's how you do a, a single tooth implant case. And of course you can extrapolate that to multiple implants and such. Now what the laboratory gets uh, is a, a, a open STL file. They do get a proprietary file for if they're using the CareStream portal. And what the laboratory will do is take that file and bring it into their CAD, their, their CAD software. Um, design and usually the implant library, such as in this case, the implant library has actually a, a pretty good looking analog of the implant. Uh, they will design, in this case, we're doing a screw retained crown um, on a titanium base. So they have the library of the implant, the titanium base, and then they can design a crown that's cemented onto that titanium base. Very, very straightforward, very easily. And then they'll have a chimney there opening so that it can be a screw retained crown. The nice thing about doing guided surgery is that we're able to do a lot of our cases, the majority of our cases now screw retained. And that's, that simplifies the restorative process. It simplifies the parts that we need and such. And it actually allows us to do a, a lower cost um, restoration. So for example, this restoration, this is the exact one that was designed in, in the previous uh, video you saw. This is, a, this is a cost for the crown part of the restoration. Um, very reasonable cost. It's you know, your standard, basically your standard crown fee. And then of course the cost of the titanium base, which is typically around $60. So you, know, you can see the cost savings um, for uh, doing a screw retained crown like this on a, on a titanium base. Of course, the lab has the ability to prep uh, stock abutments as well and of course do custom abutments with, with a similar workflow. 
So here's a, a similar case, not the same case in the previous slide, but this is a similar case where uh, we did a screw retained crown. Um, these go in so easily with a digital process. The occlusion is hardly ever need, needed to be adjusted. Um, the contacts, I usually like to have the contacts broad and tight. So sometimes I have to adjust the contacts, but literally it's about a 10 or 15 minute delivery appointment to do these types of restorations. And then we seal up the access hole. And you can see, you know, it certainly meets the criteria of a, of a decent implant restoration. And because there's no cement, this should last the patient a very, very long time. Uh, the maintenance is, is basically the same as with a natural tooth. So uh, that's the restorative aspect of it. Um, I've been called a hacker, and the definition of a hacker is someone who takes a technique or a piece of equipment and uses it for a purpose other than what it was designed for. So in uh, early two or late 2014, I had started uh, on this road to figure out how we could lower the cost of doing surgical guides and, and digital dentistry. And I found this low cost 3D printer, which I then uh, customized the settings for and got the company to start carrying uh, FDA cleared material so we could actually make surgical guides. And literally we could print these surgical guides for less than a dollar. So the missing part of the puzzle, of course, was the CAD software to design the surgical guides and the ability to bring in DICOM images and optical scans for accuracy. So at first we started making model-based guides and we realized we could quickly segment out a, a part of a DICOM image. Here is a quadrant that we segmented out. The higher the resolution on the scanner, the better the, the model or the better the image is gonna be. Um, so you can see we got a very high resolution image here, which uh, basically we 3D printed. And then I realized also we could take that model and take an x-ray of it, and we could actually see the roots because all the internal data was also printed. We could see the roots of the teeth, and we could actually reverse engineer a guide. So that was fun while it lasted. Uh, this, is another, this is another 3D printer. Um, the next generation of our technology, which is a, a more refined printer, can see that the quality is much improved, um, the resolution is much improved, and now this also has uh, FDA cleared materials for doing multiple things, not just surgical guides, whereas the previous printer only had the resolution to do surgical guides. This now we can do mouth guards and um, orthodontic aligners, et cetera, and pretty soon we'll be able to do digital dentures and such and temporary crowns. But this is, this is a Form Labs printer. This is one we currently use the most in the, in the office. Relatively low cost. You can get into one of these printers for about $3,500 and print a model like the one you see here on the screen for just a few dollars uh, by basically exporting an STL file out of, a, out of a, a CVCT image. So what really changed um, you know, about five or six years ago when it came to surgical guides, because we were using surgical guides, but we weren't really all that impressed with them, is the ability to merge DICOM images or CVCT images with optical scans, or what we call a defined scan. Uh, now we're doing it in the, in the office with the CVCT, the CareStream 8100, merged with the optical scan from the 3600. And one of the things, uh, you know, our workflow in our office, for example, every single case is planned prosthetically. So if we look at Patricia's case here, we'll see the first thing we do is we'll scan in, uh, do an optical scan of the patient's existing prosthesis, or we'll do a digital wax up if the patient doesn't have a prosthesis. But in this case, she, she had a prosthesis, so we went ahead and scanned it. We then scanned the bone scan, merged the two images together, bring in a soft tissue scan as well. So now we have three images that we have and then we, from that, we can generate a surgical guide with the implants in the correct location for a good prosthetic restoration, as well as keeping in mind the bone contours that are available. And we can execute that with the surgical guide with a very high level of precision, as you'll see in a, in a few minutes. So the first, the first thing we need to understand is the workflow. Of course, we're going to do our clinical exam and diagnosis as usual. We're going to acquire our data sets, our CBCT impressions and bite registration, whether they be optical or, or, or not. Um, we'll look at that in a minute if you don't have an optical scanner. 
we can still do everything in a digital setup. We mount the models and do a digital wax up or conventional wax up, scan the models if you did a conventional wax up, plan the case in software, design a guide, and 3D print the guide. Now, if you don't have an optical scanner, there are ways to uh, acquire the images that you need from either a stone model or a, uh, or a impression of the patient's jaw and still align that with the CVCT jaw scan. As a matter of fact, on the CS8100, um, the resolution is so high that it, it's actually uh, quite good um, for using that to create an impression, uh, taking a CVCT scan of an impression or stone model. Um, the theoretical resolution is as good as 35 micron. Um, and we've gotten some beautiful images from scanning uh, impressions or stone models in lieu of doing an optical scan. Of course, we have an optical scan and that's a more direct approach and that's what we use the majority of times. Um, the next step is to plan the implants in the CAD software, draw the curve, create the surgical guide, and ex export an STL file from that, and then 3D print the surgical guide, which again, we do in office at a very low cost. So uh, I mentioned we, we do need to merge a DICOM image with the optical scan, and this is extremely useful for case presentation. Uh, in the next slide, you'll see how we used a, a prosthetic-driven implant uh, planning software from CareStream to do an automatic merge of the uh, by just clicking uh, clicking a one button, do an automatic merge of a CBCT image with the uh, optical scan in in the CareStream system. So here's a video showing the workflow. Uh, usually, what we'll do is I'll have the assistant. If I do a consultation, have the assistant pull up the, um, do the scans and pull up the CVCT image in the consultation room. I'll go in, click as you see here on the optical scan, click align and confirm the alignment and confirm that I want to align it. And the software now is going to automatically align the optical scan with the CVCT image. This gives you a lot of information when you're talking to patients. You know, patients don't understand two-dimensional x-rays, even if they're two-dimensional slices from a CVCT. This is a much more powerful way of communicating with patients. We find that it really leads to a high case acceptance rate. So, for example, in this case, we actually did two optical scans. We scanned the patient with the um, with, with uh, edentulous areas, and then we actually scanned the patient's prosthesis in as well. And you can, can, you can actually align both images with the CVCT, and it's going to do the automatic alignment here again. By the way, this video, which I'm showing you on this slide, this is real time. This is not speeded up in any way. And uh, this shows you that you can actually do this in a consultation room with the patient there. And if you look in the lower right-hand side, you'll see the two images aligned. One is the edentulous and one is the prosthetic uh, area, uh, prosthetic scan. And you can use this, for example, to show a patient why they don't, you know, they need some bone grafting or why you might want to change a treatment plan and not put implants in a certain area. So this is how we're using this technology right now, mostly in case presentation. Uh, we don't have the ability to, to fabricate a guide, but that's coming pretty soon. And actually, uh, you'll be able to pretty soon um, export this, these two merged images out to a third-party software, such as uh, Blue Sky Plan, which is the one we use mainly. So again, the idea is to digitize the patient, merge in the DICOM images with the defined scan or the STL file, uh, either from a CVCT plus an intraoral scan, a CVCT plus a stone model scan on the CVCT or a VP, VPS vinyl polysiloxane CVCT image um, scanned in the CVCT. And the bottom line is um, you, you can get a very good image. Now, this is something I, I sort of pioneered in 2016. I developed a technique to uh, take a, a CVCT image and reverse it from a DICOM and reverse it of, a, of an impression. And if you go on Google you'll, or YouTube, you'll see that uh, there's a video on how we developed that. Now, the thing about having the CareStream 8100 is it will do this automatically for you. So there's less workflow, like I said, the fewest number of clicks possible. Um, it's very easy to do and the output is actually very, very high quality. Again, uh, 
looking looking at the workflow, if you take a CVCT, an intraoral scan, a stone model scan, or VPS, uh, any of these will get, you can, uh, the, the stone model or the VPS CVCT, you can put in the CVCT unit. You don't have to have an intraoral scanner, but again, it's just an easier workflow if you have an intraoral scan, but you can convert that image from a stone model or a, a impression scan into something that looks pretty much exactly like the intraoral scan. The other thing that's unique about uh, the 8100 is they have a built-in object scanning module, which is extremely useful. For example, if you wanted to scan a patient's denture and use it as a scan appliance, like in a dual arch scan technique for making a surgical guide, or if you want to scan a stone model and have it export, this is what it looks like during the process. And this is what is exported through the CS model software. So you can export this into the CareStream software. You can also export it as, a, as an STL file and bring it into other implant planning software, for example. Same thing with the impression. The software workflow is built into the CareStream system, the 8100, so that you're able to scan a denture, scan a, uh, a stone model, scan an impression such as this one, and then generate, and it goes into the CS model software, it'll automatically put a base on it if you want to print 3D print it later with a base. Um, it's a very easy workflow, and then this is the kind of image you generate, and then you can bring that into your implant planning software for your defined scan on which you would generate your, uh, your uh, surgical guide. You could even layer all of these uh, models, upper model, a lower model, and a byte, or upper impression, a lower impression, and a byte, and scan all of these and generate images like this and then segment them out later. Um, you know, again, the 8100 has a, such a high resolution that it allows you to do all of these different workflows, and not that you're going to do every single one of them, but you're going to choose whatever works best in your practice. So actually, let's look at an actual case. So here's a patient, 60 years old. He presents with a fractured tooth, tooth number uh, nine, fractured at the gum line, came to us for a second opinion. And you can see he has a lot of inflammation around the tooth because the dentist had re-cemented the tooth on. And as you can see on the x-ray here, there's excess cement, there's a lot of inflammation. Uh, he was told by his, his previous dentist that he needed to have the tooth extracted and have an implant done. We concurred and he agreed to go ahead with the treatment. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually scan the, the patient's uh, teeth and soft tissue with an optical scanner, bring it into, uh, this is, happens to be the Blue Sky software. Uh, we merged the two data sets together, the CVCT with the DICOM, sorry, the, uh, the SDL file generated from the optical scan, the, the CS3600 with the DICOM from the 8100 merge the two together, uh, plan our implant from a prosthetic point of view so that we're going to be able to make a screw retained restoration. Then we're going to do a digital extraction on the, on the optical scan because we want the surgical guide to get as close as to the extracted site as possible so we can use a shorter drill which will give us a little bit better accuracy as far as the, the drilling and the placement of the implant. We'll then go ahead and design a surgical guide. We basically draw the contours of where we want the surgical guide to go. The software then uh, will actually do the design for the surgical guide. We will uh, export that out and print it on a 3D printer um, just for a few dollars. We'll put in a metal sleeve and again, all of these things depend on which implant system you're using, which sleeve you'd want to use, but it's very, very straightforward. And then we go ahead and go to the the operatory, extract the tooth as atraumatically as possible. We'll place our surgical guide, drill the site for the surgical gut for the uh, implant. Actually, in this situation, this, this particular system allows us to actually place the implant through the surgical guide, which actually helps with the accuracy of the placement as well to help to keep the implant from drifting um, as we place it, even though the, 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 the osteotomy might, in, might be in one direction, sometimes the implant can actually drift as you're placing it. Once the implant was in, in this case, we got an Ostel reading, which gives us a, a 71, which told us that we can actually um, load this implant immediately. So we took a shell crown, 
uh, uh, indexed it in the mouth using light cured composite, finished it outside of the mouth, finished polished the margins, uh, made the uh, subgingival contours exactly how we wanted them to be, and then we placed that implant with that implant restoration into the implant, and the patient goes home with with a tooth, basically same day dentistry. Uh, the nice thing about about doing this is we can actually see the result immediately. And as you can see here, this, these are axial slices uh, going through the different uh, layers. You can see how you know this is would have been a difficult case to do without guided surgery. There's a natural concavity on the buccal or facial, and then we have the incisive canal to deal with. Yet we're able to do this with a very high level of predictability. Something that I, in this case, I probably wouldn't have even, even attempted to place this implant. I might have done some bone grafting prior to putting the implant in. But with a surgical guide that we fabricate in office, typically for total cost less than about $20, we're able to precisely place, place an implant. And here's a final restoration, screw retained restoration. You can see that uh, you know, we did get a little bit of tissue recession. We knew that was going to happen because of all the inflammation but the patient was very happy with the restoration, and uh, that's how you were able to do you know, implant dentistry, very, very low cost and, and high quality. This case is actually a case from my wife. She uh, uh, does the same uh, types of dentistry that, that we do. This is actually a case from a victim of domestic violence. This 41-year-old uh, lady had her two front teeth knocked out by her husband. Uh, we do these these cases as uh, for, as charity cases in our office. We work with an organization that uh, helps uh, victims of domestic violence. The interesting thing here is that the lady had kept the teeth. We actually cleaned them up, autoclaved them, and then we scanned them 360 degrees with the CareStream 3600 optical scanner. We then took a CBCT image on the 8100 and we inserted the teeth back into the areas where they where they came out. We did a, did a digital wax up as well because we saw that the patient had peg laterals. Um, we brought in the opposing dentition so that we could check and make sure that the teeth were in the right place, planning everything again prosthetically. From there, we designed a surgical guide uh, based on the edentulous model. This is what the surgical guide looks like. Uh, then we went and executed the case. This is my, actually my wife, Catherine Ferguson, doing the surgery here. With this particular system, this is a BioRizon system, we're using a keyed system. So basically just a few drills and then we're putting in, she was putting in the implants here manually. So, you know, we're able to do this uh, fairly straightforward without a whole lot of stress because we know uh, we have confidence and accuracy of our surgical guides. So those are the implants going in. And what you're seeing now is actually an overlay of the po pre and post-op scans. So the white is where the implants ended up and the red lines, the red uh, lines around there are where the implants were planned. So you can see we got a very high level of accuracy with our surgical guides. In a second here, you'll see, we'll actually go down the axial slices as well and that'll give you even a better understanding of uh, the accuracy of, of uh, guided surgery today. Of course, all the planning has to be done properly. The merging of the files has to be accurate, but we, we have a lot of confidence in our surgical guides today. And you'll see here in a second how we're now going down to axial slices from the, from the coronal aspect down to the apical aspect, you can see Again, very high level of, of accuracy. We're off by maybe no more than about 0.2 millimeters. Certainly better than freehand uh, implant placement. And there's one other image that's gonna come up here in a minute, which is a graphical representation of the planned sites in red, and then the actual uh, final position of the implants in white. This can be done easily by overlaying uh, pre and post-op scans. We don't do this in every case, but certainly for teaching purposes, you know, occasionally we'll, we'll do this. What about bigger cases? So here's a case of a terminal dentition patient. Now this patient um, 
uh, is very concerned about not having, you know, not having a denture. Um, you can see that there's really no hope for these teeth, but still the patient would rather not have to wear a denture. The options are taking out the teeth, grafting the sites and going back and putting implants or doing something same day. In this situation, we decided to do it same day. We can do bone reduction guides, we can do stackable guides, but they're somewhat costly, so we came up with an alternative, <coughs> excuse me, something called a serial guide. So what we do is we bring all the data sets in, the optical scan, the CVCT, and we plan out six implants here. But what we do is the first uh, guide we're going to make, we're going to extract the three anterior teeth, and use that first guide, which is gonna sit on the remaining three teeth and the soft tissue to um, place the four implants. The second guide, and that's what the, guide, the first guide looks like. The second guide <clears throat> is going to be uh, screwed down to the first four implants, and we're doing digital extractions in the, in the STL files as we go along, in the optical scans. And the second guide is going to be screwed onto the first four implants with, with a particular tool, and then we'll place the final two implants. So this is a second guide. You can see it, it has all six implants in it now. And here's how we actually accomplish this clinically. So we take the patient, uh, take out the, the, the first three teeth. We place the first guide in. Again, the guide has good stability. The most accurate guides are actually two supported guides. And this is a guide that was printed on the Form 2 printer. Um, in, in the office. So we uh, placed the first four implants and then this is a second guide now and we extract the, the remaining teeth, place the second guide and with this tool we're able to actually tighten down the guide onto the first four implants that we placed and then drill the sites and put in the, the additional implants. You can see we actually place these subcrestal. By doing this way we only make a very small flap even though we're going to do bone reduction as you can see now we've done the bone reduction, but we only needed a very small flap to do that. And now we place our multi-unit abutments. We put, uh, actually we use some PRF membranes here around the multi-unit abutments. This is a media post-op scan with the CareStream 8100 to check the accuracy of the implant placements. We place telescopic copings on the, uh, the multi-unit abutments, do a pickup of the denture chair side. The denture had been fabricated and What's nice is the lab technician actually had the surgical guide plan ahead of time and he knew exactly how to make end the occlusion and all that and, and you know, we had it articulated and he made the denture ahead of time with the holes so that we could do a chair side pickup. And once we, once we do this impression, we turn it over to the lab technician who finishes the, the appliance uh, in the office and then we're able to deliver this appliance same day, so the patient comes in, has all the teeth removed, a minimal trauma as far as the surgery goes, and then goes home with a full arch fixed prosthesis. So really the epitome of implant dentistry today. So one, one additional thing about that um, full arch guide, um, you can actually make a duplicate of this and use it as your final impression. Uh, uh, impression tray. So don't throw out your guides or have the lab make a or print your own and make an extra uh, impression, uh, sorry, uh, surgical guide and you can use that as your final impression, custom impression tray. So what other things can we do with this technology? We're using the CS3600 every single day in our practice. The latest thing we're doing is mouth guards. So here's a work digital workflow for a mouth guard. You take your optical scan, again you can uh, loaded into CS model software, export it into third-party software, and this is uh, ExoCAD. ExoCAD has a great um, module for making mouth guards, and this is the workflow that we would do in ExoCAD. Again, this is actually speeded up this video. Um, the total time to plan out a mouth guard in, in uh, ExoCAD is about 12 minutes. You can see it they have virtual articulation. You can go through all the different movements and grind in the occlusion on the mouth guard. And then once that's done, we can export this as an STL file and print it. In our case, we're printing it in-house on the Forum Labs printer. Uh, this is a print, just a sample print, how, how we were able to stack 
uh, 15 mouth guards at a time. And if you calculate out the volume, it shows you the volume of, uh, of the mouth guard, of the, the print. Uh, it, ca it came out to about uh, between four and five dollars uh, of resin in order to print this, print these types of mouth guard. That's per, per mouth guard. So you can see how you know the cost savings are tremendous for doing things like this in office. Here's what it looks like. Uh, you see on the left side, that's our little uh, 3D printing lab that we have. And then this is the Form 2 printer on the right-hand side with 15 night guards or mouth guards um, printing at the same time. We're able to put these, uh, uh, clean those up, remove the supports, and you can see a finished mouth guard on the, on the right-hand side of the screen. Now, for about 20 years, we've been doing conventional orthodontics in our practice. And, um, you know, if you're, if you're a small office, uh, you know, and you're doing uh, conventional orthodontics or, 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 you know, crown and bridge dentistry or whatever, your lab probably looks something like this. Um, you know, our goal with um, adopting this technology is to get rid of our stone models. So believe it or not, we had about 20 years worth of stone models in a storage uh, unit. And since acquiring the, the CareStream 3600, we had our assistant scan in, we went to the storage unit, got all of the boxes out of there and scanned in all uh, 20 years of stone models that we had. So we have a record, a digital record, and we could get rid of all the, the boxes and such. Actually, this is a little bit misleading because these are actual um, orthodontic aligner cases that we're doing. We're fabricating our own clear aligner, so we still need the boxes for that, but we don't have any stone models in most of these boxes. These boxes have 3D printed models. So when you scan a patient um, for orthodontics with the, with the CS3600, it automatically goes into the CS model software like this, and you can do some rudimentary um, analysis, uh, orthodontic analysis and such, but we actually have uh, other software which we use for making clear aligners. So we're doing our own in-office clear aligners. Uh, typically a, a case will cost us uh, $150 or less to do. So those of you who are doing Invisalign, Clear Correct, or other other systems, if you adopt this technology, you can you can certainly reduce the cost of doing these cases. So here's a case. This is uh, by one of um, our partners, Dr. Reynal Gonzalez, who uh, has an office literally next door to us. We've uh, partnered on teaching courses. Dr. Gonzalez had limited his practice for the last 20 years to orthodontics. This is one of the cases he did: 12 aligners, two week interval six months to do this case. Here's another case. You can see he's, you know, we were even able to fix things like cross bites uh, using clear aligner therapy. Uh, this, in this case, um, 22 upper aligners, 19 lower aligners. He had to do two revisions. And one of the nice things about doing the revisions in your own office is there's no, there's no cost to do it. Actually, the software that we use um, is very low cost. It's free to, free to actually plan cases. If you want to be able to export them, there is an annual fee, very reasonable. I think it's about uh, $900 or $1,000. Um, of course, we have the full licensed version. Uh, it took 11 months to do this case, and 160, 100, less than $165 in cost to the office to do this case. Here's another case, opening a bite, actually, and, and, and doing some nice work. This one was only six months, eight aligners on the lower, 12 on the upper, two week intervals for changing out the aligners and about 90 bucks to do this case. So here's one of my cases. This is, uh, this is Abby. Um, she had been in orthodontics for about, uh, this is how we started with her. We did conventional orthodontics on her. As you can see in this recall exam, she's got her brackets on. Um, we had taken out the, the lower wire in this case, but you know she's in active treatment here. And one of the nice things about doing an office clear aligners, if you're doing conventional orthodontics, is that you can now finish all your cases at a very low cost. The hardest part that we found in doing conventional orthodontics was finishing cases. So now we finish every single case using clear aligners. And we can do it because we're doing it in office. Typically, it costs us less than $50 to print the models and do the, the uh, aligners. So in Abby's case, as she was about 20 months into treatment, we decided to take the, the conventional uh, wires and brackets off and 
we did a full art scan on her, and you can you'll see in a second when pins come up that upper and lower scans that the you know we weren't finished with the orthodontics. She still had to have some some bite to fix the bite and some minor tooth alignments. It's going the software goes through a refinement process after you do the scan as usual, and then you can see here. I'll tip you know I'll tip this up, and you can see the bite ha hasn't been settled in yet. You know, that's one of the hardest things to do in conventional orthodontics is to settle everything in perfectly. And you still see there's some minor tooth movements that need to be done. So we scanned her uh, 20 months into treatment. She's got some spacing there still. And now we, you know, I'll show you how, this is what it looks like in the CS model software. You can do measurements and such. And, you know, you can see again, I'm going to tip this up so you can see um, how the bite hadn't, hadn't settled in. But what we do is we treatment plan in a third-party software, and when you have open systems, you can just go from one software to another seamlessly. So we had we brought the software into this um, OrthoRx software. Sorry, we brought the STL files OrthoRx software, planned out the case. You can see the treatment plans here, and we're putting some buttons on the teeth. And actually, we're doing a plate correction in this case using um, using a software, and then we export the STL files here to the 3D printer. We print the models. We can print sometimes up to 16 or 18 models on, on, at one time on the Formlabs printer. We fabricate uh, the aligners on those models, and each model is moving the teeth a specific amount. And what's nice about planning your own cases, you have complete control over all of that. You can do interproximal reductions. The software will even tell you exactly how much interproximal reduction you need to do. Once we fabricate those, we deliver those to the patient. You can see this is um, uh, Abby almost finished. Actually, this is not her finished case, but uh, this is where we, we, we took pictures of, you know, starting to get the bite locked down. This is six aligners in about three months, and the cost to do this in office was about $50. And I'll tell you, Abby really appreciated getting out of uh, conventional brackets and wires um, at, the, at the time. Um, you know, after having had them on for 20 months. So the patients appreciate it. We can do fine tuning of, of the case and we can um, really do a nice treatment for the patient. And one of the things that uh, we've noticed since we started doing this is that we get better referrals. You know, the patients are so happy. They're now um, happy to refer other other people to, to get orthodontics done in our practice. So I'm gonna finish up now. Um, you know, we sh we, this is, these are the major ways we're using um, the CareStream technology in our practice, the CBCT, the optical scanning. And there are other things that we're doing, which uh, I didn't get into uh, this evening. But if you want to learn how to do some of this stuff, um, we're giving a surgical guide course on December 2nd in Fort Lauderdale, as well as the aligner course, which I'm doing with Dr. Reynal Gonzalez on the 3rd. Um, so both the surgical guide and the uh, clear aligner therapy course, Fort Lauderdale, December 2nd and 3rd, 2017. You don't have to go to both courses. You can sign up for one or the other. If you sign up online, there's a discount for signing up for both courses if you're so inclined. So this is how we're doing things. And I'll leave with this uh, simple quote from Albert Einstein. Everything should be <laughs> made as simple as possible. And as obviously, as you can see, there's some amount of complexity that goes even with digital workflows. Um, but the nice thing about digital workflows is that, you know, every time you do it, it's the same. So once you learn the basic steps, it becomes second nature. So everything should be made as simple as possible, but not simpler. I want to thank you. Here's my contact information. And I know we have some time for question and answer, so I'm happy to do that now. I'm gonna go ahead and share my webcam here. Thank you, Dr. Ferguson. That was a really, really good uh, presentation. I do have some questions, um, but before I get to those, I would like again to invite our viewers to use the question box in your control panel if you have any questions to ask. Um, what, what, um, have, how have your patients reacted to you implementing this technology in your practice? One of, the night, one of the things that we learned early on is that patients get excited about it. So we actually put the 3D printers and, you know, we, we make sure to showcase these, these technologies so patients can actually see them. Um, when we, you know, I'll 
oftentimes bring the patients into our digital laboratory. It's a lot cleaner than a regular dental laboratory in an, in an office. So it's, it's not a problem to do that. It's actually right next to me here, that picture I showed. Um, we took an old closet and opened it up because I like to have it next to where I'm doing my workflows, which is a, on the computer screen. So uh, we'll take the patient in and show it to them and they're excited about it. You know, um, they, they themselves, you know, start, uh, we'll bring up the topic of 3D printing because a lot of people are, are, under, are, are learning about 3D printing. Uh, you know, our younger, our, our, our younger families, you know, their kids are learning about 3D printing in school. So when they learn that we have this, these technology, and there's of course CBCT and optical scanning, when we go in and scan the patients, they're really wowed by it. You know, it, it's, 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 we, don't, we don't have to put the impression material in their mouth anymore. Uh, it's really something, something else. <laughs> you know, when they see us using this technology, they're excited about it as much as we are. It's fun. <laughs> it looks like a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, a uh, question from the audience, um, is intra-all scanning accurate enough to fabricate cross-arch guides? Absolutely. Um, I would probably say that the early uh, intra-all scanners were not as accurate as they are today. Um, I just read a study and CareStream actually had, had a very good review for a cross-arch uh, scanning. There are some tri tricks and tips and you know we teach all of this stuff at the course um, when you're doing, when you go in cross-arch the technology works by stitching images together. So you have to make sure that you, you, know, you, you are able to do that accurately. And there's a specific way of scanning, but absolutely. Um, you know, when you, if you're gonna make a surgical guide, you're gonna know whether it's not aligned because you're aligning the optical scan to the CBCT. And of course, you know, if they're not aligned properly, then you can start doing troubleshooting. We have had no issues. Um, not just with uh, you know CareStream products, of course, but you know we run courses where people have other technologies and other companies' technology in their practice. So I will say with a high level of confidence that it works across the board. So whether it be CareStream or other systems, they all work uh, fairly well. Some of the older systems, um, which you know I know have probably gotten outdated, uh, could have some issues. But intraoral scanning definitely is what we're using on a daily basis for accurate surgical guides. I think you answered the first question, but I have a quick question. Um, what resin are you using for night guards? Okay, so um, Form Labs has a, a, it's a clear LT, I believe, that was just released. Um, you know, we, we do work with Form Labs. Um, to you know, with some of their new products, so I actually got access to that a little bit early for making night guards. But it's available now on their website. You're, you're able to get the, the clear clear LT material, and you can make mouth guards, night guards, different appliances with it. So that's the one we're using with the Form Labs printer. And it's a you know there are other certainly other technologies out there, other printers and such, but that definitely works. Do you have any um, opinion on full arch accuracy using intraoral scanners compared to desktop scanning? I think they can be equal. Again, um, you know, the, the, one of the issues with optical scanning is scanning fully edentulous arches. So if you're doing a fully edentulous arch, maybe I would recommend um, uh, taking an impression and scanning that in the CBCT or pouring a model and then if you have if you have an optical scanner scanning the model but for fully dent for patients that have teeth i'd say at least five or more teeth across the arch we don't have an issue at all we're actually starting to use those now for uh, full arch um, restorative work using scan bodies so the technology has certainly gotten better and, and you know a lot of times uh, it's about the software more so than the hardware and that's where i think uh, CareStream really has an advantage with their, their software workflows. Okay. Um, how long does it take to print the tray of aligners or the tray of models that you showed? That <laughs> the one that I showed that in the picture impressive. there, that one took about eight hours. 3D printing is not fast. There are some, you know, the, the Form Labs is a very accurate printer. It's a very reliable printer. The two that I showed in the, in the image, um, we've been using those nonstop literally every day for about two years. 
and have you know had very few issues. So it's a very reliable piece of equipment. Um, it, it the we don't you know we don't sit there and wait on the prints. Now I can print a surgical guide in about an hour and a half, sometimes less, depending on the size of the surgical guide. But for mouth guards and such. If you're printing just one or two, it's not going to take that long. But if you're printing a whole build plat, we call that the build platform and what it's printed on. If you're printing a whole build plat platform at that particular height, and you notice we stand them up so that we can fit more things on there. It's more efficient to do it that way, and there's less um, wear and tear on the machine. So we'll typically uh, gather up all the models we need or whatever and print overnight. So, you know, it's sort of a prize when we get there in the morning to see all those beautiful prints on that build platform. It's, it's a lot of fun to see that. That's and, amazing. Yeah. Um, and you notice we, you know, we have two, two of those printers in the office. The reason is because we, we're printing different things. We're printing using different resins. We're using a surgical guide resin. We're using the ortho liner, uh, the, the, uh, the, the clear LT now for uh, mouth guards and such. And most of the time we're using the gray resin for printing clear aligners. We're doing a lot more clear aligners than we were before. Because of the cost savings, we're able to pass that on to the patients and the case acceptance rate is just through the roof with this. You know, every hygienist on a daily basis sees patients with lower anterior crowding that needs to be corrected. You know, and now the patients are willing to accept it because we can do it um, typically for under a thousand dollars. Whereas if you were to do Invisalign or, or clear correct or something, your lab fee would be probably twice that much. So we're, and that's, you know, we're talking about the cost to the patient um, of, of under a thousand dollars for most cases. It's, it's up to the doctor whether they want to they pass those savings on. Um, but we're at the point now where we've got such, got it in such a rhythm in the practice that we're able to do that. Sorry, your question. It's okay, a related question. Are CT scans of stone models accurate enough for orthodontic aligners? CT scans of stone, stone models, yes. Now, it depends on the resolution of your CBCT. And I would recommend if you're going to scan st uh, stone models, the company that makes the OrthoRx software will actually convert uh, CBCTs of stone models into, uh, into um, the, the, the models that you need, the STL files you need to plan the ortho cases. So it is accurate enough for sure. Um, what you should be doing is scanning at the highest resolution possible. So for the, the CS8100 for a full arch scan, that's typically at 150 micron resolution. Now we're printing the models at 100 micron resolution. So it's close enough and certainly uh, it, it's enough to do clear aligners. Is it enough to do crown and bridge dentistry? Maybe not, but clear liner, surgical guides, CBCT scans of stone models are certainly, um, you know, enough. If you don't have, if you have a CBCT and don't have a uh, optical scanner, that's a way to get started. But I guarantee you, once you start doing this, you'll end up buying an optical scanner just for the efficiency of the workflow. What's your opinion on a digital dentures? Digital dentures are underway. You know, we don't have the type of practice where we do a lot of dentures to begin with. So it's not something I have a lot of experience with. Um, maybe, you know, we're, we're working right now with, with uh, denture resins for printing dentures. And as soon as uh, we've mastered those uh, techniques, we'll probably be adopting that as well. So I don't have, I can't say I have a lot of experience with digital dentures, so I won't really comment. Okay. Um, do you feel that the guided surgery has helped you to achieve more predictable aesthetics and also to show and also to show patients the, the aesthetics that will that are to come for them? Absolutely. Um, you know, when we can do a digital wax up, for example, I recently had a patient um, who uh, went to uh, an all on four center and was going to have all her teeth extracted and have all on four done upper and lower. And when we took a look at her, her teeth were actually in pretty good shape. So what we did was we, we did a wax up um, and showed that to her and, you know, she accepted the treatment plan based on that wax up. We're able to do wax ups like that now in office in just a few minutes using basically free software. That's something we'll actually teach at our, our courses, uh, the, um, the surgical guide course, how to do a quick digital wax up. Um, and 3D print that, we typically use white resin for that, not the gray. It's a little bit more palatable to the patients. 
but we show we can show a patient like in that case how we could restore her teeth with just crown and bridge dentistry. Same thing with implants. We can do a quick digital wax up, sh either show the patient the, the image on the screen, or if, if uh, you know we need to, we can print that. We can send those files to the laboratory um, so that after the fact, so you know after the implants are placed, so they can uh, at least try to attempt to duplicate that wax up that we've done that is accepting, uh, accepting to the patient. So it definitely has helped with the aesthetics. Um, one of the things I was actually working on today is how to convert a temporary, the subgingival contours of an existing temporary, to transfer that information to the laboratory digitally. Now we've been doing that for, for over a decade, um, analog, you know, using stone models, and we've just figured out a workflow how to uh, actually transfer that data to the um, to the laboratory in a digital fashion. You know, we we're sort of going back now and looking all the analog workflows and figuring out ways to make that a digital process. And it's 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 exciting to be able to do that and have a part in doing that. Okay, well, it looks like it's so interesting, but we do have to call time uh, for today, and I uh, thank everybody for their questions, um, but we've run out of time, um, so if we did not get to your question, we will answer it after the webinar uh, via email. Um, thank you all for attending this webinar, and a special thank you to Dr. Ferguson and our sponsor for this webinar, CareStream Dental. Thank you, and have a good evening. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.